Hey guys, this is John, and I'm back for more punishment against Computer 4 Impossible on chess.com. The computer's white, it opens with knight f3, I'm going to play d5. I've had time to lick my wounds, having lost to Computer 4 Impossible the last couple times. I'm optimistic though, I feel sharp today. I feel like I'm in good form to take on the mighty engine. And I'm playing a setup that I have some experience in. Knight c3, I'll play e6. White can play for d4 if they want. Uh, sometimes they keep the pawn back on d2, though, in an effort to keep the a1, h8 diagonal open. I'll play bishop d6. Knight bd7 is sometimes played, too. Now we're going to transpose into a anti-Moran. When white's played d4, we're now in a variation of the semi-slav, the anti-Moran. Okay, let's castle. White usually castles. And here, taking on c4 is the standard move. After bishop takes c4, I can play b5, or I can also play e5. e5 is an idea that was brought to my attention by a new book by Lars Schondorf, Grandmaster Lars Schondorf. So I may play that. b5 also has its merits, but e5 is simpler, and it's less explored. It may be interesting to try. Hmm. I know b5 better, though, is the thing. Let's play b5. I'm going to stick with what I know. At some point, I will try e5, though. Okay, so the engine just drops the bishop back to e2. I'll play bishop b7. So long term, I'd like to play a6, followed by c5, to liberate this light square bishop. Rook d1 aligns the rook with the queen. Just trying to recall my theory. Is it a6 or is it queen c7? I'm leaning towards queen c7. I think it's this move. Creating a queen bishop battery and connecting the rooks. Now on e4, you almost always respond to this move with e5. Because otherwise, white will be threatening e5 himself. Now take, and we'll take with the knight. If white wants to try to look for an edge, they will do something like this, which avoids a trade of knights, and now f4 followed by e5 is a concern for black. This is theory. Some sharp theory, too. <laughs> it has a tendency to become complicated out of this. Exactly what you want against an engine, right? <laughs> Diving into sharp theory. Okay, is it rook ad8, or is it something else? I could move this knight and try to attack h2, like knight eg4, for instance, but the computer will play g3 if I do that and block my attack on h2. So I'm looking mainly at rook moves, rook ad8 and rook fe8. Both are possible. Okay, let's play rook ad8. And I bet they'll move the dark square bishop. Nope, they play a knight move. On knight f5, I was just planning bishop c5, which pins the f-pawn. So let's go ahead and do that. Bishop e3, so the engine just wants to swap those dark square bishops. All right. So bishop takes e3, knight takes e3, maybe a6. Once again, looking to play c5 long term. A6 is helpful in solidifying our structure, too. Let's trade. I could initiate trades down the d-file. Rook takes d1 check, followed by rook d8. I'm also wondering if white could play a4 and prod at the pawn on b5 try to force me to compromise my structure in some way. I'm not worried about f4 at the moment because of queen b6, attacking the knight, pinning it to the king. So, the, so at the moment I can relax and try to do something constructive in the center or maybe on the queen side. 
I don't want this bishop to sit on b7 behind my c6 pawn forever, though. Hence why I'm looking at a6. So if a6, a4, b4, knight a2, then I can't play c5 because if knight takes b4, although e4 might be hanging in that case. Okay, let's play a6. Yeah, and also knight takes b5 was a threat, so I think it makes sense to sidestep that. If I had followed that plan, rook takes d1, rook takes d1, rook d8, I might have fallen into knight takes b5 is the pin on the c-pawn. So the engine plays a5. How about queen b6? Getting out of any c-file issues and having a look at the knight on e3. Hmm. Yeah, let's try that. Time-wise, I'm not doing too bad. Take this way. Probably rook d1 is coming. Nope, a5. So the computer is not going to dispute the file for now. I could centralize the queen with queen d4, but rook d1 might just kick me back. So my two candidates here are queen c5 and queen c7. I'm leaning queen c5 because that creates a pin on the c file. It does block my c-pawn, however. Not sure how I feel about that. If queen c7, knight d5, let's say. Knight e d5. Knight takes d5. Knight takes d5. Queen d6, the knight has to move. I don't see too many issues for black there, but queen c5 seems like the more active post for the queen. And I might be threatening b4 because of the pin on the c-file. If queen c5, knight d5, knight cd5 this time, I can play queen takes c2, knight takes f6, check. g takes f6, knight takes c2, rook d2. Okay, I'm going with this move. Rook d1, the computer proposes a trade. So if I take, likely queen takes d1 is coming. I could flee the file as well, but do I want to play that? Like rook e8, maybe knight d5 again. And the difference is after the, the trade on c2, knight takes f6, my pawns get doubled, but I won't have the rook infiltration at the end. I could, I could try rook d4 right now. That's a possibility. Trying to induce a trade on the d4 square. Rook d4, maybe knight f5. Hmm. Rook d7, too. Maybe rook d7. Offering a trade while preventing white's queen from infiltrating. Rook d7, knight d5. Queen takes c2, take f6, g takes, knight takes c2. Hmm. Maybe worse than that endgame. Would hate to flee the file with rook e8. And rook d4 again is met by knight f5. You can see I'm being very conscious of danger. I'm trying to avert any sharp positions where it looks like my king is going to be weak on the back rank or the knight is coming into f5 with the queen coordinating with it. Not easy to do, though. If queen e7, knight f5 is coming, there's no doubt. What if queen f8? It's a full-scale retreat, but... That might not be so bad. Kind of invites f4 though, doesn't it?
Tough call right here. Hmm. Rook d4, knight f5, let's say rook d7. Rook takes d7, knight takes d7. That could be all right. But rook d4, wasn't knight d5 the move I was kind of worried about? No, but then I have rook takes d1. Okay, I think I'm going to try rook to d4. Knight f5, okay. So now I was considering pulling the rook back to d7. Because now the knight is not defending the queen. So I feel better about doing that. Let's see if the engine swaps. Queen c1, subtle, so potentially coming into g5. What if g6? g6, are you going to play queen h6? What are you going to do to me, engine? g6, queen h6, I can trade on d1 and play queen f8. Trade, trade, knight d6. Hmm. I could play h6 too, just trying to rule out queen g5. But g6 is the move I want to play. Maybe bishop c8 is also not bad, but bishop c8, queen g5 is the thing. Okay, I'm going to go with g6. I'm a little concerned about the complications, especially if the queen comes into one of these squares. Whoa, knight d5. Ah. Uh, did I blunder? Seems so. Hmm. Took my eye off the ball for a second. Yeah, now knight takes f6 as a threat. If rook takes d5? Wow, they can just play queen takes c5 then. And if rook takes c5, rook d8. And I'm getting checkmated. Hmm. I may not have an answer to that knight d5 move. I blundered. Queen takes c1. Knight takes f6 check. King h8. Rook takes c1. I don't have time to take the knight on f5 because my rook is hanging. I'll just be down in exchange after that. Brutal. Yeah, that's a that's a killer blow. I'm searching for any practical way to continue this game, but I'm not seeing much. I can't move my queen to a square that also defends this knight. D6 is covered by white's knight on f5. Since rook takes d5 is just met by queen takes c5, I don't see what I have available. It's crushing. Hmm. Because if I could play rook takes d5, e takes d5, queen takes c1, rook takes c1, g takes f5, then it's a game. Then it's interesting because I would have two minor pieces. But just to show you what I mean, so after this, the engine is going to take on c5 with the queen. And I can resign because rook takes c5 will be met by rook d8. We'll just play it till checkmate. All right, bye bye fins. <laughs> so let's take a look at that. I feel like I feel like I was all right. Round about here. After a5, queen c5. Rook d1 presents some unusual tactical issues, but it largely feels okay. Hmm. I played rook d4, knight f5, and then rook back here. And I actually thought the knight being on f5 would help me avert. 
knight d5 issues because the queen is undefended now. But I guess that was the point of queen c1. The queen is now defended by the rook. And also there's this dual threat of queen g5. That's a very tough move to see. That's a move that a human would struggle to find and probably have to spend a lot of time seeing. Whereas the engine just can whip it out right away because it sees the ramifications of it. Great dual purpose move, retreating move. Maybe I have to play h6 to keep the knight on f6 defended while stopping queen g5. Let's say h6, and now knight d5 isn't as devastating. I still can't play rook takes d5 though. I'd have to do this, I believe. Uh, maybe even knight takes e4 is playable in this case, which defends my queen. My rook is defended by the knight on e5. So actually this is playable. Okay, let's, let's go back to the beginning and have a look. Much of this was theory via transposition. So as soon as white plays d4, now we're in a variation of the semi-slav called the anti-moran. Knight bd7, bishop d3, castle, castle, take, take. I played b5, the main move. There's also e5. There's also a6 as well. I played that before in games. a6 is designed to make black's intentions with the queen side pawns less clear. Like I might play b5, but I also might play c5 and not play b5 at all. So I just did this. It's interesting because the computer will sometimes play theoretical main lines like this, but in other games it will just play something completely off the wall and act like it has no opening book whatsoever. I don't know if the computer has an opening book, this particular engine. I suspect it does not, based on a lot of the games I've seen. So queen c7, e4, I play e5, take, we take with the knight, knight d4. Yeah, and as I mentioned, this is a position that undoubtedly has a lot of theory. I've seen either this exact position or a position of this type before. Uh, maybe I have to review my theory in this line because this is perhaps not a line you should venture into without knowing quite a bit. Yeah, if I, if I knew I was going to get this position against the computer, I would probably have chosen a different opening because <laughs> one tactical mishap can spell disaster in this line. So knight f5 was played attacking the bishop on d6. I don't want to allow the trade of my dark square bishop for white's knight, so I play bishop c5. Bishop e3, a6. Here knight takes b5 was a threat. So a6 reinforces the pawn. a4, queen b6, rook takes d8, rook takes d8, a5. Possibly I should simply retreat to c7 given that I had tactical issues with the queen on c5 involving the discoveries. It's a little more passive on c7, but I need not fear any knight takes b5 tricks, at least, because I can always take the a pawn. I thought knight d5 could be something to worry about, but after knight takes knight, knight takes knight, I can just move the queen, say queen d6. Now this knight's under attack. Let me go back to that position. Yeah, so a5 could be better met by queen c7, I believe. Queen c5 as played, though, it, it doesn't seem like I should be losing in five more moves after that move. Rook d1. I played this rook d4 move. Hmm. I think this is the moment to improve. I just couldn't figure out a good solution to the d-file pressure. The threat of knight cd5. All of that. Also f4 at various times, especially if I move my queen. I thought about rook e8, just seeding the file, but trying to stay solid and guard my back rank. I didn't like knight f5, though, looking to go knight d6. Oh, I think I also didn't like knight cd5. Because after queen takes c2, uh, knight takes f6 in between move, here and take, I don't know that I have compensation for the double pawns. It's still a game, but white is probably better here. Compare it to um, if after queen c5, white had played knight cd5. 
Well, in this case, I could play the line that I mentioned. Queen takes c2, knight takes f6 check, g takes f6, knight takes c2, and rook d2. And I'm getting great activity, and I'm forking the bishop and the knight. White would have to play bishop d1 to save the piece, and black is doing awesome. Maybe just c5, open the bishop. The computer would never go for this. Still not sure. I'll have to check this because I think I'm worse a little bit, but I feel like there is a move that will solve Black's issues here. I don't know what that move is. If I simply trade rook takes d1, I thought queen takes d1. I gotta watch out for queen d8. Maybe I could play knight ed7 and block the queen's infiltration. Hmm, that might not be so bad. Knight f5, knight d6 is a concern. That's another reason why the queen is poorly placed on c5, is it blocks the c-pawn. It's hard to get the bishop in the game via this diagonal with that happening. So I think I can distill this game down to two moments, and those moments would be my decision to play queen c5 on move 20, and then the immediate move thereafter on move 21, where I played rook d4. I think that was a mistake, and I'm still not sure what the best move is here. I'll have to do some research. Leading up to this point, though, I feel okay about, about my play. Yep, and after I played rook d4, knight f5, rook d7, and the computer makes this nice retreat move, queen c1, this aggressive retreating move, setting up queen g5 and also knight d5, I blundered with g6, after which knight d5 is lights out for me. Another victory for the Silicon Beast. Yeah, I weakened f6, which was fatal. Yeah, maybe h6. But still, I don't like it because of that same resource, knight d5. And I'd have to do what? Queen takes c1, knight takes f6, g takes f6, rook takes c1. I have a bad structure. Knight takes h6 as a threat. Maybe I can go rook d2. What else is there after h6? Because I looked at this right after the game. Is there something else that I wasn't seeing? Hmm. Yeah, at any rate, it seems like I should play this to rule out queen g5. Because I don't want to allow the queen in to double attack g7. All right, chalk one up again for computer form possible. I'm not sure how its rating is this low. I suspect that uh, the standard ratings on chess.com are, are a little deflated. You can see mine is only 1842, whereas on ICC, my 15-minute rating is close to 2450. But maybe the computer just gets so many games against lower-rated players that it only wins like you know one point per game or something, and occasionally people will nick the engine for a draw. I see some people trying anti-computer strategies. I've resisted doing that yet, but if this gets really bad, maybe I'll have to do it <laughs> to avenge humanity and uh, try to get some, some points against the engine. But for now, I'm satisfied just playing interesting games against it. And this was one. So it got me tactically in the end. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this game. I'll be back soon with another Man vs. Machine. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.